welcome back to my channel. Today I'm tackling another controversial topic and everybody's favorite excuse to bully others, having a dog outside when it's cold. Or really animals in general, I guess, since everybody on Facebook thinks that there is only one animal out there and that is dogs. Because Karen the animal lover will stop for a dog but will run over a snake. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys enjoy animal videos, but don't if you get offended easily. <laughs> Let's talk about the Karens of the world and their favorite saying this time of year, if you're cold, they're cold, bring them inside. I've even seen people go as far as to say that it is a felony to leave animals outside in the cold. Well, the first thing that's gonna be really hard to get across to people is that the word animal, or even pet for that matter, does not exclusively apply to dogs and cats. I know, people are gonna be super shocked to find out that there are more than two animals in the world. And secondly, no, it is not a felony to have your pets outside. These laws vary by county, state, city. It is not just exclusively all across the country or, or if you're watching from another country. So that's not an accurate statement that's been going around. Most places do require for you to provide shelter for the animal. But today in this video, I'm gonna be explaining why it is really important to not create laws forcing people to keep their dogs inside their house. Laws that are completely lacking in common sense and research. Good intentions are not always thought out. Let's talk about how to provide for dogs in a way that is humane and acceptable. What is humane and acceptable to one dog is not something that you can apply across the board to all dogs. What is comfortable for one dog is uncomfortable for another dog. For example, Clark here does not have a double coat, so he doesn't like cold weather and winter makes him pretty uncomfortable. He's my service dog, so when we're out and it's cold, he's wearing a sweater even indoors. Freya and Odin here are great Pyrenees and they are a year old. So they are big, but they're gonna get bigger and they have a thick coat of fur. So being inside the house is really uncomfortable for them. So like I was saying, these dogs were bred to take care of the animals and bred to be outside during extreme conditions. Freya here is not gonna tolerate being inside the house during her favorite time of year. Not all dogs can be treated the same way. They're all very different and different things make them happy. This concept of treating dogs as individuals is really hard for most people to understand. They think that all dogs should be treated exactly the same. However, when it comes to other types of animals, they don't have a problem seeing the differences there. So when you hear people saying that dogs belong inside the house, you know, you're know you not hearing people saying that that applies to chickens or goats or horses. I set up a Facebook experiment to try to understand why people think this way about dogs but feel differently towards these other animals. And I had some theories. I thought maybe they think that size makes a difference, that uh, larger animals are able to stay warmer compared to I don't know, even large dogs. Or maybe they just don't care if certain types of animals are cold as long as dogs aren't cold. Well, it turns out that both of my theories were actually wrong. The biggest reason that most people think that dogs and cats belong inside the house is because they think that those are the only two types of domesticated animals and all other animals are wild. Really interesting conclusion for me because it was really interesting realizing that most people do not understand what domestication is. Like when I asked somebody on Facebook about cows, they said it depends if you have domesticated the cow or not. Well, all right, well, let's get into that. Here's the actual definition of domesticated that I pulled from National Geographic. Domesticated animals are animals that have been selectively bred and genetically adapted over generations to live alongside humans. They are genetically distinct from their wild ancestors or cousins. Domesticated animals not only include dogs and cats, but it also includes cows, sheep, horses, chickens, rabbits, llamas, and the list goes on. All these animals are animals that have been bred by humans from wild ancestors. They no longer exist in the wild, like dogs. There's no wild poodles running around, but there are wolves. Same thing with cows and llamas. 
and other animals you may think of as farm animals. And the important thing to understand here is that these animals are no longer equipped to survive in the wild. They rely on humans, some more than others. Horses are domesticated, but have escaped back to the wild and thrive in North America and Australia. But animals like sheep that can't shed their wool are unable to survive without human help. So for thousands of years, humans have been domesticating wild animals to the point of creating certain breeds for each type of animal. And then suddenly, a hundred years ago, air conditioning becomes a thing, and suddenly everybody thinks that these pets need to be kept at a constant room temperature. Let's not forget that these pets, dogs, even rabbits included, were not bred under these modern living conditions. And heating a chicken coop, for example, can cause more harm than good. Breeds were designed to do well in certain environments, and big fluffy dogs were bred to live in the snow, protecting their herd animals. And this should explain two important topics. One, that I'm constantly saying that Great Pyrenees and similar breeds should not be thought of as house pets, and two, why I don't really like talking about my own Great Pyrenees. Like I was saying, these dogs were bred for outdoor work, so trying to keep them inside last winter when they were eight weeks old was really difficult. And eventually we started letting them just stay outside all the time when they got a little bit older and they had the option of coming inside. But as they grew, they chose more and more to actually just stay outside even on cold nights. Getting one of these dogs and forcing it to stay in the house is why there are so many dogs of this breed filling up shelters. I was actually in a few Facebook groups for this breed and it was really depressing seeing people complaining all the time about normal behavior that this breed exhibits. People try to force these dogs to be the type of pet that they want. It doesn't work out and then they get rehomed or dropped off at the pound. These are working animals. Maybe not every individual, but in general, they don't make good house pets. It's important to understand breed standard when getting a pet. For example, I have one corgi that's afraid of large animals, but I'm not gonna promote that as breed standard. Corgis as a breed should have some herding instincts. And these great Pyrenees have a guarding instinct. And secondly, that I don't really like talking about my great Pyrenees. And that's because these dogs are not pets. And that does kind of depend on what you consider a pet. So if you consider a pet to be an animal that you provide for all of their needs and keep them happy and comfortable, yeah, they're pets. But if you think of a pet as a dog that sleeps on your bed or sleeps on the couch while you're at work and you take it out for a walk once a day, these are not pets. Honestly, I have these dogs for one reason, and that is to keep the outdoor animals alive. Their parents and grandparents and family going back generations lived with farm animals to protect them from dogs and wild animals. They live with these animals 24 seven through sunshine, rain, and snow, and they are as happy as can be. I don't like talking about them too much because the idea of a working dog is a foreign concept to most people. They think that the dogs are being abused, mistreated, or unhappy. I even know of one person whose Pyrenees were stolen while protecting sheep. The thieves thought of themselves as animal rescuers. I have pet dogs and I care for them differently than I do my farm dogs. So with my Facebook experiment, I also saw that people were actually willing to be a lot more reasonable when it came to different types of animals and not just dogs. And that was mostly because they thought that only dogs were domesticated, but it was also because there was less emotion involved when talking about different types of animals. People often think with emotion instead of logic when it comes to caring for dogs. And you express a lot of love for your little chihuahua that's sitting there in its sweater, shivering in your heated home, and you just want all dogs to be taken care of. But that makes you forget that each dog is an individual and requires different care. So a big fluffy dog is gonna be overheated sitting in a heated home. They're gonna prefer to be outside in the cooler weather because they have a giant coat on already. So we can't be making laws based on emotion that hurts more more people than it helps. So what does a law like animals can't be left outside the house during winter look like for somebody like me? Well, we go back to the word animals. I'm trying to picture what 13 alpacas inside a house would look like, <laughs> but okay, let's say dogs. What does that look like? Well, probably a hole through the wall. They are very destructive dogs. 
they tear bark off of the trees to use as chew toys, even though they are provided with toys. So that's okay outside, but inside the house, that is probably gonna be an issue. Would the door hold up if they were trying to get out? I don't know, um, maybe not. And well, I guess a steel crate could work, but it is no exaggeration when I say that they will howl all night long. And that's inconvenient, I guess, and uncomfortable for the dogs, but what would it look like for my outdoor animals if I had to keep my dogs inside at night when it's cold? Well, it would mean my animals, once I consider pets like my llamas, horses, my birds, would end up dead. Neighborhood dogs would come in at night and kill them for sport. And it might seem like that's escalating things. It might seem like that's exaggerating things, but it's not. It happened to us just last year before Christmas. So a law forcing people to keep dogs inside their home would, for some, result in miserable dogs and for others, result in dead animals. People get dogs that they can't provide the correct care for and the dogs end up in the pound. Now, imagine if you created a law where it forced people to not care for their dogs correctly. That would mean even more dogs would end up in the pound. There's a lot that we can do to help pets when it comes to animal welfare. We just need to make sure that the laws that we pass aren't going to actually hurt the animals that we're trying to help. Now the takeaway from this is that I hope in the future you don't just blindly bully somebody for having their dog outside, but really take into consideration whether or not the dog is suffering. And I hope people stop trying to steal farm dogs. It's also very dangerous because in my situation, my farm dogs are actually very aggressive to strangers. And also realize that most of the stuff on Facebook is clickbait. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to follow me on Instagram.